Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman. I've been a neurosurgeon here in Fort Wayne, Indiana for about 40 years, but I'm only 39 years old. Part of the medical conditions that a neurosurgeon treats, besides uh, brain tumors, is vascular disease, strokes. But when does the disease really begin? When we start having uh, vascular disease, at, at what age? I'm sorry to say, it starts at a very young age. They're starting to find vascular changes in children at age four, as a teenager. And that's the reason really for tonight's uh, discussion and lecture about the diet that children should be eating. I've written a book called The Secrets of the Non-Diet for Adults. But I'm also finishing a book called The Secret of the Non-Diet uh, for Children. So let us uh, begin. Let's look at the problem a little bit, the state of the children's health. 60% of adults are overweight in this country, a very serious problem. 32% of children are overweight, 32%. Would you believe it? Obesity is the most common pediatric disease. Pediatricians need to be wellness doctors. Age two to five, we have an increase in obesity from five to 13.9%. Overall, there has been a 300% increase in overweight and obesity in the United States over the last 15 years. I mean, really dramatic uh, statistics. The definition of overweight and obesity, I mean, what makes you overweight? Uh, what makes you obese? What are the measurements uh, that we normally use? Body mass index is what we generally use uh, uh, for adults and for children. That's based on, the, on your height and your weight. It can be pounds or in uh, kilograms. It's based on a graph. There's a different graph for children, a different graph uh, for adults. Uh, adult BMI, then what are the normal ranges? 25 is normal and under. 25 and under is normal. Mine is about 24. Uh, and 25 to 30 is overweight. 30 to 35 is obese. Over 40 is morbidly obese. I mean, you're heading for uh, big time trouble. Evaluating children. How should a child be evaluated? If you take a child to a family physician, for example, one of the first things the nurses uh, should be doing is measuring the height and weight of the child and, and then keep a BMI chart uh, on the child uh, as it grows over the years. Frankly, starting uh, at, a, at a very young age. Starting, say, at age two, we should need to be start looking at the uh, uh, BMI or even before. Uh, and uh, waist measurement is another method. There are no good studies or graphs you can refer to on waist measurements, uh, but generally it would be that the uh, uh, abdominal measurement should not be larger, taken at the umbilicus, at the umbilicus, larger than the hip measurement or the uh, chest measurement uh, done at the nipple level. If it's larger than that, uh, they'd be overweight. There are countries like Brazil where they've studied it extensively. I know a pediatrician, I said, how do you uh, uh, judge the weight of a child? I talked to one and he said, I look at them. Well, that's just not good enough as far as I'm concerned. I have another one I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, he has a child get on the floor <laughs> and do push-ups, find out what kind of shape they're in. I thought that's interesting. But the BMI is really uh, the standard uh, of measurement of, of our inner child's uh, uh, weight. Evaluating children, they, if you're in the 85th percentile compared to other children, you're overweight. If you're the 90th percentile, uh, you are obese. I unfortunately see a lot of obese uh, uh, children today. Recently, I saw one at Parfue Hospital had dove into a pool, broke his neck, was paralyzed arms and legs. I would say the child weighed 280 pounds. And the first thing he said to me, doctor, I said, anything I can do to help you, young man? And the uh, and, uh, first thing he said to me, I need to get a McDonald's. I'm very hungry. I mean, a bit of a, a, a shock. Uh, so an overweight child at age eight probably would have a BMI of 41 as an adult. As an adult, quite uh, 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 sad. So the effects of childhood obesity, how does this affect a child? How do the, his friends and peers uh, react to him? This is great uh, importance. Uh, so there are psychiatric and cosmetic changes, poor self-esteem. The child may react that he very, feels very poorly about himself uh, by, by remarks of his classmates and friends, uh, 
Perhaps the girls aren't talking to them very much uh, if you're seriously overweight and, and starting to have psychological problems. It's not uncommon. But what are the long-term effects of being obese as a child? A child can develop diabetes. We see a lot of children today with diabetes. Would you believe it? Yeah, with adult type 2, and now called children, type 2 diabetes in children uh, is uh, qu common, actually. It's starting to be common. We think it probably will double within the next 10 to 15 uh, years. And of course, these are the children who in the future will have what? Heart attacks and strokes at what age? 60, 70, 80, 90? No, 20, 30, 40. They'll be starting to have strokes, heart disease, and be dying of heart attacks in their 30 uh, and 40s. So it's very important to pay attention to the children. They have increased heart disease, strokes, and cancer. There's a much higher incidence of cancer in uh, people who are overweight, including children. Yes, children's cancer picks up uh, it, with obesity. And the reason is uh, that fat has in it inflammatory factors, nasty, about 20 nasty chemical factors that can cause heart disease, inflammation, uh, and cancer. Uh, uh, these are fat chemicals and enzymes. So fat is not a quiet little thing that sits around. It's a very active metabolic uh, factory. So to get rid of it is very important, especially abdominal fat. So we're going to have a doubling of the diabetic rate is coming. Uh, with huge human and financial cost. I, I'm not sure our country will be able to bear the cost of the doubling of the diabetic uh, population. Heart disease begins uh, at what, at age 50, age 40? No, it begins at age four. At age four, they find changes in the arteries. So would you feed your child uh, at a very young age is very important. Obese children become obese adults. Interesting. 80% of the children who overweight at age 10 to 15 were obese at age 25. Very uh, interesting. One million U.S. citizens died this year from heart disease and strokes. Strokes and heart disease and 90% diet diseases. We rarely see them in Asians. In Africa in 1950, they couldn't find a person who'd had a stroke or a heart attack. But they come to the United States and in the African population we have a very high rate of heart disease uh, and uh, uh, diabetes and hypertension. It, it's not uh, in their genes. It's, it, it's in their diet. It's uh, in their diet. There will be 1.5 million people in 10 years uh, probably will die from vascular disease per year. Great human cost and, and very, uh, very uh, expensive. 1973, Dr. Joel Berenson uh, studied 15,000 children were studied. Uh, this is this is Bogalusa, uh, Louisiana. They, they've run the study now going on almost 40, 40 years. Autopsies were done on all that died and accidentally uh, from disease. They found vascular disease uh, in these uh, uh, children to, to their uh, total uh, surprise. Uh, they found increase in the lousy cholesterol and the LDL cholesterol in these children. They found that the HDL cholesterol uh, was uh, much, too, much uh, too low. It needs to be high. The HDL is the good cholesterol. The LDL uh, is the uh, uh, bad uh, cholesterol. Dr. Charles Atwood wrote a book, uh, a very good book uh, that you can find on my website about obesity in children and, and the eating fatty foods. I think it's an excellent book. And uh, he suggests you check the blood sugar and fat on all teenagers. Generally, the American Di uh, Pediatric Association would say check it only uh, in f in, on children uh, where there's a family history of strokes and vascular disease at a young age. Dr. Atwood suggests, and I suggest, that all teenagers should have their cholesterol, triglycerides, uh, and blood sugar uh, checked, even if they're skinny. Uh, I have uh, uh, some relatives uh, with, li with little children, and, and I know some of them eat only meat. They're thin but I love to know what their cholesterol and triglycerides are. I bet they're abnormal. I bet they're abnormal. A, a sad thing for me to watch. Uh, they found aortic fatty streaks at age three in the aorta, the main vessel from the heart. They found fatty streaks in a lot of these uh, 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 children. Syndrome X, what's that? Metabolic syndrome. We hear about this more and more these days. Uh, it's insulin resistance. It's also called glucose intolerance syndrome, pre-diabetic syndrome, metabolic syndrome, Dr. Raven syndrome, all the same thing. Uh, we have probably 40 million people in this country who have metabolic syndrome. 
uh, that's the inability to properly metabolize sugar. That's what leads to diabetes, heart disease, cancer, Al uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease uh, syndrome. We need to know about it. most adults and children who have this are not even aware of it. They're not even aware of it, but they're going to get these diseases down the line. And it's they're strictly found in uh, people who uh, are overweight or, or obese. The syndrome X diagnosis, if you ha have insulin resistance and glucose intolerance, your blood sugar is too high, uh, you're obese, your triglycerides in your blood, your fat in your blood is too high, have high blood pressure, or your waistline is greater than 40 inches as an adult, or an HDL less than 40, you, you have metabolic syndrome. And you, you can also have this uh, in, in children. Uh, probably 40 million people have it in the United States. One third of children uh, have it, but don't know it. And that's what's sad. These are the people in the future who are gonna get diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, and cancer over the next uh, 20, 30, or 40 years, and many of them will die at a very young age. So know your BMI for your child, and know it, you can get it off our website, cashonmindbody.com, uh, or know it uh, uh, from books and graphs that you can easily obtain uh, from the uh, computer. Uh, does your child have a pot belly? Take a look and be realistic. A lot of parents in denial. A lot of parents in denial. They look at the child and realize the child, the child is uh, obese. I recently attended a, a school function. Uh, and it's in the high school students especially. You see them in the middle school, the, uh, children overweight isn't so bad. Once they reach high school and they're much more independent and their friends, they follow the diets of their friends and they become more independent. They, f they eat the school diets, uh, obesity picks up. Uh, especially transition from high school to college that first year, uh, a lot of obesity uh, uh, shows up. Uh, so use the waist measurement. Is your ch child a couch potato? Is your family eating a lot of chips, donuts, drinking soft drinks, refined carbohydrates and processed foods, carbohydrates that have been stripped of their nutrients, they're not, not raw vegetables, for example. Uh, for example, refined foods, white bread. White bread's pure sugar. Uh, white rice is pure sugar. So eat foods that are not uh, stripped of their nutrients. Refined carbohydrates and processed foods, they've been through the manufacturing process, uh, they frankly are poison. Fat is a nasty metabolic factory. We talked about that. Fat makes about 20 nasty chemicals. Uh, they inflammatory chem chemicals, cancer chemicals, uh, vascular disease uh, uh, chemicals. And uh, so uh, to have some, uh, a lot of fat sitting in your body is a very dangerous situation. You're going to have a shorter life. You're going to, you're going to have uh, strokes, heart disease, uh, and, and uh, cancer. Icosanoids, what are those darn things? Very interesting. In evolutionary history, uh, there was a time on Earth where there was no oxygen on the Earth. We had anaerobic metabolism. How, how did the cells communicate to each other? There was no blood system uh, in those cellular uh, structures. They had iconosoids. They jumped from to cell to cell. They are the intel chip of your body. And they are, and they are, and you have bad iconosoids and you have good iconosoids. And, and they are controlled a great deal uh, by your diet. Your intel chip of your body is controlled a lot by your diet. The, your triglyceride HDL ratio, taking your, the fats in your blood, your triglycerides, and the good cholesterol, that ratio uh, has a, is a measure of your longevity, is a measure of your longevity. How you're gonna live can be determined by that ratio. So that's a good test. And it's a cheap test that you can find out what's really going on uh, in your body and in, in your child. So what I recommend is a way of eating, not a diet. That's the reason I call it the secret of the non-diet. It's a way of eating. Complex carbohydrates. What are complex ca carbohydrates? An example, a baked potato, a sweet potato, corn, a, a carrot. Uh, they carry complex carbohydrates in them. In the beans carry complex carbohydrates. What makes them complex? They have a lot of fiber in them. They have a lot of fiber in them and the fiber lines your gut, and the calories with them, the cholesterol with them, are not all absorbed because the uh, fiber stops the absorption. So these are very good foods to eat. If you eat 100 calories of carbohydrate, you might absorb only 60%. The 40% you lose in your stool. So if you had a big old baked potato and you don't put butter on it, a very, it's a very healthy thing to do, very healthy thing to do. Versus you eat a simple sugar, or you eat, say, 100 calories of fat, 97% of a fat will sit, will sit in your buttocks or your belly by morning. Only 3% use metabolism. So a lot of difference between fat and a complex a carbohydrate. Whole grain is the next thing I recommend. Brown bread, black bread, pumpernickel, 
whole grain products, products that still have the nutrients on them. They haven't been stripped uh, of their uh, nutrients. Brown rice, dark bread, all types of vegetables. Eat all the vegetables you want, uh, uh, very uh, healthy. It's, it's high volume, high nutrient, uh, and uh, very few uh, calories. Incidentally, 100 calories of broccoli has more, has twice as much protein in it than 100 calories of beef. You wouldn't believe it. You'd think beef had more protein. Absolutely not. 100 calories of broccoli has more protein in it because of the volume, the volume. Legumes, beans, all the beans uh, of any type you can eat. Fruits, all you can eat. Fruits, all you can eat. If you Nutrient-dense foods, full of phytochemicals. There are about 15,000 to 20,000 chemicals, phytochemicals, that are in, in uh, uh, vegetables and fruits and, and, and carrots and, and uh, uh, very uh, healthy. Uh, but if you process them of that, and, and you, then you have a refined sugar, uh, not any good. Avoid meats. Meats are 80% uh, fat, 80% fat, and a lot of cholesterol. Plants don't have cholesterol. Plants don't have cholesterol. Uh, fatty cheeses, most cheeses are 80% fat. You can get some less than that, and there's some vegetarian cheeses out today you could eat. And, and they're full of trans fatty acids. Uh, the, the, those fatty acids that are the hydrogenated uh, plant oils that are very uh, dangerous. They paint your arteries and lead to uh, vasculitis. So in summary, I'm recommending complex carbs, whole, whole grain, Vegetables, all you can eat. Legumes, beans, all you can eat. Fruit, all you can eat. And, and maybe uh, eat, uh, eat meat maybe a couple of days a week. Try to make it fish. I don't eat any beef at all because it's full of cholesterol and I don't want to raise my uh, cholesterol level up. So in essence, what I'm recommending really is, is a vegetarian type diet. A, 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 that would be a one type of diet where you can eat some milk products and cheese products or vegan type diet where you don't eat any um, uh, cheese products, uh, milk products, and don't eat any meat. The third diet I recommend is called flexitarian, which is kind of me, where you eat 80% uh, vegan, vegetarian, and eat, eat, eat some meat, fish a couple of times a week, maybe occasional piece of chicken, uh, and they're called a flexitarian, or you follow the Dr. Joel Furman's diet, uh, which in essence is like a flexitarian, where he recommends a very dense, high nutrient type diet, uh, a lot of fruits, vegetables, whole grain, and, and he allows uh, the eating of some lean meat. So he calls it a, a, a nutrient diet. I think it's an excellent diet. The secrets, all carbohydrates are not alike. There's a big difference between complex and simple. The complex, remember, is the baked potato. The simple is the, is the, is the uh, uh, white bread. Because of fiber, if it's just complex sugars, they're hard to break apart. Uh, you lose 40% of the calories in metabolism of complex carbs. You ate a baked potato, a big old thing, and no butter on it, stuff like that. I maybe put a little olive oil on it, or a little mustard on it, a little salsa on it. That keeps the calories quite low, maybe 200, 250 calories at most. Uh, and you can eat, eat a huge thing. You're going to lose weight eating a baked potato, contrary to what you uh, uh, might think, uh, because only 60% will ever hit your bloodstream. But remember, what I said about fat, 97% of fat you eat, it is absorbed by the body and only 3% used in metabolism. Each pound of fat that sits on you, you maybe t use three calories a day, that's it, that's it. Every pound of muscle that's sitting on your body uh, takes up 40, uh, 40 calories per day. You're sitting there, not even using it, not even using it. Anyway, so to develop muscle is a, a, you know, a very good thing. Uh, the secrets, let's go through the secrets a little bit. The fiber and complex carbohydrates absorb fat and cholesterol to fast digestion. So you eat a baked potato, you won't absorb a lot of the cholesterol. Refined carbohydrates reduce the good HDL. Remember, the, the good one is the HDL, the high density. The one that cleans your arteries out is the HDL uh, and increases triglycerides because the fat's up in your blood and blood pressure and fat storage increase from re refined carbohydrates. Remember, those are ones stretched or the, uh, uh, stripped of the phytochemicals. Uh, uh, Foods that promote weight loss are high in complex carbs because it takes a lot of energy to break them down. We, I think we get that point across. Complex carbohydrates increase serotonin level. That's one of the chemicals uh, in your blood that makes you feel, that makes you feel good uh, and also turns the appetite off. Reduce the appetite. Complex carbohydrates reduce the appetite and increase your feeling of well-being. How do they reduce the appetite? When complex carbs 
uh, hit the bloodstream, uh, they push the, the amino acids, which are the breakdown products of uh, protein, into the muscles. Then the tryptophan level, an amino acid, in your blood raises, goes through the blood-brain barrier to your brain, and that's the precursor to serotonin. Serotonin gets secreted, makes you feel good, turns the appetite off. That's why complex carbs turn the appetite off. Fat and protein uh, don't do that. I noticed that when I went to Eddie Molo's one, uh, one time here, or as I say, a steak restaurant here, and I, I was guest speaker of the Chiropractic Association. They were eating these huge steaks, and I had a piece of fish. They, they brought in huge carrot cakes, huge, like a, like a loaf of bread. I noticed they all ate it, at least half of it. I couldn't believe it. And they took the other half to the hotel. Well, why was that? Eating that steak, the appetites had not been turned off. A, a really proof of what, a living proof of what I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, so the secrets reduce the saturated fat and simple sugars in, in, in your diet. And uh, uh, saturated fat, for, uh, for example, would be a steak, would be a steak, cheeses. Uh, Saturated fats increase artery clogging, LDL cholesterol. They paint your arteries, and that's what leads eventually to heart disease and strokes. But the point is that this lecture is, it starts at a very young age in children. That's the reason I, I, I bring up the children. That's where it all begins. The first symptom of, of heart disease, and 50% of the people who are going to get heart disease, is it arm pain, chest pain, neck pain, headache? No, I'll tell you what it is. Death. Yes, the first symptom. A normal looking person grabs their chest with chest pain, falls over and dies. Because looking at them from the outside, you don't see what their blood vessels look like. That's the reason for the proper diet as a child. That's the reason, that's the reason why it's so important. Trans fats, a double whammy, reduce, which are hydrogenated uh, 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 oils and fats, plant oils, uh, that you, for example, get in French fries, for, for example. Uh, 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 are very unhealthy. Olive oil is not a health food. To take a tablespoon full is fine. I put it on a baked potato. But you can't eat 20 teaspoons full. Or when you hear about the Mediterranean diet, it's all olive oil. Well, I'll tell you something. They just get away with it because they, they eat a lot of fruit, they exercise a lot, and they work very hard. That's the reason Mediter Mediterraneans get away with it. But it's no one is as good uh, than just eating a little bit of olive oil. And, and that's a uh, monosaturated oil, a little bit healthier than a polyunsaturated oil, which would be, for example, you find in a, in a steak. So human milk is only healthy below age two. Isn't it very interesting? You wouldn't think that. Yes. Uh, mother's milk is the healthiest thing a child could have. The best thing a mother could do for a child, breastfeed it for two years. For two years, because of the immunoglobulins that help prevent infection, uh, and uh, because uh, it, it, it is high fat, it is high cholesterol, but children need cholesterol, they need fat to build the cells of the brain and of their body. So below age two, uh, it, it, the very uh, best gift you give your child is to breastfeed it. Uh, breastfeeding for two years is the best gift for a child. Animal protein raises a cholesterol. We talked about that, steaks. Remember, plants have no cholesterol. Plant protein has no cholesterol. The American and Canadian Diabetic Association said that it, a Vegetarian diet is completely healthy even for a child, as long as it's, it's a varied uh, uh, diet of many different types of plants and vegetables. Occasionally, read in the paper that a vegetarian child was starved to death. The problem is they didn't feed the child. <laughs> but if you don't feed the child, it's going to die. And, uh, but if you give them a, a varied combination of, uh, uh, of foods, a, a vegetarian, vegan diet, even in a child past age two, is very healthy. Uh, I can show you the paper from the Canadian and American Dietetic Association who said that's perfectly uh, healthy. So secrets of non-diet, again, let's continue. Balance the vegetables and beans for complete proteins. Com for example, athletes uh, don't need to take protein supplements. That's silly. I got to write out an order name training book. The Dallas Cowboys are vegetarians. Lewis, the famous track star, is a total vegetarian. He doesn't take protein supplements. You can get all the protein you need for your muscles from a plant diet. That's, that's totally incorrect uh, when they you think you get to drink all these protein uh, uh, drinks. It takes 30 to 40 calories to maintain resting muscle. So the more muscles you have on you, the, the more uh, calories you're gonna burn every day. Veget let's go through this a little bit. The vegetarians don't eat meat in general. Seventh-day Adventists are vegetarians. They live 10 years longer than us on the, on the average. A lot of them are concentrated in Loma Linda, uh, California, uh, and, uh, and they are largely vegetarians. 
vegans don't eat meat or dairy or products made thereof. Don't eat anything that has a mother or a face. You can't be a vegetarian. Eat one. <laughs> a little humor in here. Uh, what's a flexitarian? There's 70 to 80% vegetarians or vegans, and that, that's me. I eat fish a couple of times a week. And, uh, and, uh, but uh, I think that seems to keep my blood figures uh, normal. I think it's very important to know your blood figures of your child and you. You've got to know what's your cholesterol, what are your triglycerides, what's your HDL, what's your LDL, what's your blood sugar. We all should know it. It should be a little card in your wallet. Why? Because remember the story about the guy grabbing his chest? Uh, the first symptom of heart disease is death. Remember that story? You want to know it now. Now you can prevent it. To start your diet after your first heart attack, or maybe you're dead. It's a little late to start the diet. So know your figures now. Very important. Know your BMI. Know your blood studies now. I really talked to somebody who knows them, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, and, it, and it's, I think it's the fault of the physicians, frankly, and, uh, and, and public awareness. We need to make people aware. That's why I'm sitting here today. Uh, Nutritarians, remember I talked about the work of Dr. Joel Furman. I'm going to visit his uh, clinic in uh, June to learn more about his work. Uh, he recommends nutrient-dense foods, some lean meat. That's Dr. Furman. If you come right down to it, uh, it's, he's really a flexitarian. His diet's a flexitarian diet. I heard he's a good tennis player. I'll find out in May. Non-diet as a way of life. Uh, don't count calories. Little portion control is necessary. If you follow the secret of non-diet, uh, you, you won't uh, uh, really need to count calories or, or practice portion control. I know that's the way I follow it, and I, I teach it to my patients. Uh, and uh, they do well on it. And uh, matter of fact, at the moment, I've got 200 patients, 200 people in, in my diet classes in my Mind Body Institute. And, and, uh, and out of the first class of 100, they follow the system of eating, sickness and diet. Uh, seven people have lost their diabetes. Am I proud of that? Yes, I'm proud of that. So, and, and lastly, I'd like to mention uh, for a minute, exercise in adults is 30% of weight loss. So exercise is very important. In children, I think, it's 50 percent. You got to get the child off the couch, uh, and, and 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 you as the mother, remember it's the mother. 80 percent of the time, the mother picks the diet. So it's very important because since you buy the food, that you lead the way. But get your child involved in exercise, walking, playing a sport, uh, very important. A good walk every day is the cheapest thing you can do, and pick a sport your child might like because he's not going to play it unless he feels he can achieve something. Uh, and uh, uh, in summary, the secret of the non-diet, if you follow this diet, you're going to have a, a good-looking child, a healthy child, and you're going to prevent strokes, heart disease, cancer at a very young age, which we, unfortunately we see a, a lot of. I'm writing a book on this subject that should be available in about three months, and I wish you good luck, and thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you.